And uh, it's about time for me to start talking about the Southwest Florida Ecosystem Restoration Plan. And uh, I wanted to start off by telling you that uh, the National Estuary Program was created under Section 320 of the Clean Water Act. There are 28 in the nation, 28 NEPs in the nation. There are four in Florida. Across the Gulf Coast, there are seven NEPs. Three of them are in Florida. The uh, Section 320 requires each NEP to convene what's called a management conference. And that's a series of committees or boards. And the structure is pretty similar among all the NEPs, but not completely identical. Uh, we have a technical advisory committee of scientists, engineers, and planners that provide recommendations, a citizen advisory committee of citizens and public outreach specialists that also provide recommendations. And they both provide recommendations to a management committee of resource manager, and all three provide recommendations to a policy committee of elected uh, officials and top agency heads. And it's our policy committees that determine what we do and how we spend our money and, and what our priorities are. According to Section 320 of the Clean Water Act, every NEP must adopt a comprehensive conservation and management plan. And each of these comprehensive plans are federally approved. Ours addresses hydrology, water quality, habitat, and stewardship. Uh, this is a common theme among all the, the comprehensive conservation management plans. Uh, all the different issues are not identical, but kind of follow that theme. As far as the Southwest Florida Ecosystem Restoration Plan, it's the three Florida Gulf Coast NEPs that are cooperating to assist the council with recommendations. So we have no real authority regarding the Restore Act, but we want to make it really easy for the council to invest in Southwest Florida. The NEPs are well connected with both federal and state agencies at the upper end and the, our local entities, whether it's counties, cities, non-governmental organizations, and the like. Uh, but I think the main power we have is to be able to identify unified regional priorities. And it's just a completely powerful thing to say, yes, these are our priorities. A great example is the Babcock Ranch. On February 14, 2003, the Southwest Florida Regional Restoration Coordination Team identified Babcock Ranch acquisition as one of its first four priorities. It was the top of our four priorities. By 2006, it, most of it was acquired by the state. Of course, all of you here know that there's more to the story than that, and it took a broad partnership of many, many people saying, yes, this is our priority, and we have this unified vision, and yes, we are going to acquire the Babcock Ranch, and because of the broad consensus on that acquisition, it was accomplished. NEPs have, have our core values. We're science-driven, consensus-based, and we operate with large networks of partnerships. Our partnerships include citizens, scientists, resource managers, elected officials, business, industry, educators, children, resource users, governmental agency, for-profit groups, not-for-profit groups. You know, we want everyone in our tent. And we think that by having the considered opinions of many from many different perspectives, we come back, back with the best solutions. We have some resources. Uh, NEPs, all the Florida NEPs ha have restoration needs inventory. We identify what our restoration needs are in concert with our partnership. We're required by the federal government to track all restoration and, and protection, that is, acquisition projects, uh, to the federal government. And we report this for all of our partners to show how much we are doing to, through our partnership. We have cooperative agreements with the EPA, which provides a mechanism to bring federal funding resources to local restoration and, uh, and research projects. Our host agency for the Charlotte Harbor National Estuary Program is the Southwest Florida Regional Planning Council. And the Regional Planning Council has an MOU with all the other 11 or 10, the other 10 RPCs in the state to share resources. And the, the RPCs cover the whole state. So this is our proposed area of concentration for our Southwest Florida Regional uh, ecosystem restoration plan from Levy County south to include Collier. And this is where our NEPs are. And you'll probably notice straight off the bat there are counties outside of our jurisdictions that we propose to cover. And we propose that through our interlinking partnerships. To the north it's with the Southwest Florida uh, Water Management District. 
and through the south, it's via the Southwest Florida Comprehensive Watershed Plan. Many of you know this is a Southwest Florida feasibility study, but it changed its name. Feasibility study rolls off my tongue so easily compared to watershed com or Comprehensive Watershed Plan. But because of these interlinking partnerships, we believe that we can bring fair coverage to this 11-county area. Again, we identify restoration needs, and many of you recognize this from our own comprehensive conservation management plan. Uh, we identify land acquisition needs as well as land restoration needs. This, in, in this case, it's exotic vegetation removal, but we've identified hydrologic restoration needs and water quality needs as well. Uh, we've done this mapping and, and resource inventory for restoration acquisition needs through our broad partnerships. And in fact, it was many different conveners that, that did this. The NEP, the uh, Stero Bay Ab Agency on Bay Management, um, the check through the or Charlotte Harbor Environmental Center through funding by the Southwest Florida Water Management District, et cetera. This is the uh, Southwest Florida Comprehensive Watershed Plan boundaries to the left. And to the right is the uh, functional groups, the restoration needs. And in fact, the GIS line work for this plan began with work that we had done for our own restoration needs. And so, you know, because of these partnerships, we were able to supercharge the feasibility study process and, and bring it a year ahead of where it would have been otherwise. Many of you all know this form by now. This is a form that the three NEPs developed to identify restoration project needs to form the core of our, our regional restoration or ecosystem restoration plan. And many of you have submitted your ideas and, and project uh, ideas to us already via this form. Thank you so much. And we had originally set a date of October 1st, but now we've delayed it to October, or November 1st. And many of you are working on those right now. If you don't have access to the digital form, just let any of us know and we can forward that to you. Uh, we've received some uh, projects, like I said, to date, and I'm going to go through some of the, what these projects are so you have a flavor of the projects that we're seeing. The first is the Coral Creek Ecosystem Restoration. Phase one just broke down, I guess, a week or two ago, and this is for phase two that's being submitted. And it uh, is in Cape Hayes portion of, of Charlotte Harbor and includes a lot of uh, ditch blocks and creation of water storage that will help uh, restore the hydrology of the Cape Hayes region as well as um, improve water quality and habitat. Uh, the Cape uh, or uh, Coral Creek flows into an area of Gasparilla Sound, which is really known for its fish abundance and diversity, and I think this will improve it as well. This is the Yucca Pens, otherwise known as the Charlotte Harbor Flatwoods Initiative, and it's a partnership of both water management districts, both counties, Fish and Wildlife Commission, FDEP, FDOT, USGS, and, and the Charlotte Harbor National Estuary Program. It's just taken a lot of different agencies to address the problem of water flows. Water flows used to be from northeast to southwest, but uh, because of different... Uh, activities that have occurred, waters flowing north to Alligator Creek and, and shunted south to, to Gator Slough, so the Charlotte Harbor Flatwoods is starved of water. And, that, and the water comes out in two places instead of broadly across uh, a sheet flow system. And so this project is, is, is designed to address this problem. This was one of the top priorities identified in the Southwest Florida Comprehensive Watershed Plan. This is a recent submittal from the Sanibel Captivo uh, Conservation Foundation in concert with the City of Sanibel and Fish and Wildlife Service. And this uh, project is going to restore a, a big portion of the Sanibel River and, uh, and also in incorporate water quality components to it. This is the AgriPartners, also known as Edison Farms. This is a Google map that shows the Florida Natural Areas Inventory of Conservation Lands, state in green, county or local in red, and then nonprofit in blue. This is the Corkscrew Swamp Sanctuary with Audubon. And this is a conservation easement through developed lands. And as you can see, the Edison Farms project is the last little building block between these interior wetland features and Estero Bay. 
It's the second highest priority identified by the Southwest Florida Regional uh, Ecosystem Restoration Coordination Team. And then also we've asked for partners to send us lists so we have a feel for other projects that are being, that are being considered for submittal. And these are the lists from Lee County, both the um, different uh, hydrologic restoration projects on mostly Conservation 2020 properties, as well as stormwater projects and interconnections to restore hydrologic flows. This is a project that's in uh, Collier County. It's the Bellmead Flowway. It was in the Southwest Florida Comprehensive Watershed Plan, and it is also a high priority out of that plan. It's going to reduce excess flows to Naples Bay and redistribute these flows to the Bellmead system, including Picayune Strand, Rookery Bay, and the 10,000 Islands. It's another major hydrologic fix for Southwest Florida. And then it reminds me in a lot of ways of the Donna Bay Watershed Management Plan, where Calpin Slough had been diverted from the Mayaka Basin into Donna Bay. Donna Bay is a very small estuary, and because of the, its watershed expanded four or five times, it has way too much water. And so this project is designed to restore those flows back to uh, the, the Mayaka Basin but also to protect Donna Bay from too much flow. We're also receiving several research proposals, both from Sanibel Captiva Conservation Foundation and Mount Marine La Laboratory. Uh, this uh, pot of money for the, the Southwest, or for the Gulf Coast Ecosystem Restoration Council may not cover restoration, but it may. And what we are advising is if you think it may or may not be covered by the council or it may not be count counted, we still encourage the submittal of those uh, ideas because we can fit those ideas perhaps to other funding sources. And to have a comprehensive understanding of what our restoration research needs are is really important to, to tie those funding sources to the, to the right projects. Also, one of the things that three NEPs are going to be considering is different alternative administrative processes that we would recommend perhaps to Treasury or to the Council. And there are different ways that that money can flow. And what I'd like to do later today after we talk about um, project selection criteria and some project ideas is through our automatic uh, response system to get your ideas on which administrative process you think is going to be best. And I'm through, I threw this slide up there so you can start thinking about it. To administer the Council Restoration Funds through the NEP's cooperative agreement, that's a federal mechanism that's there. To administer Council Restoration Funds through the RPC's mem Memorandum of, of Understanding. As a competitive Council grant, where the Council designates the type of projects and, 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 uh, and recipients compete on a national level. Uh, competitive council contracts where the council uh, designates specific projects for funding and the recipients uh, compete on a national level. Where the council awards block grants to federal agencies, competitive grant funding through each agency where the uh, recipients compete on a national level. Council award block grants to regions similar to the uh, housing and urban development community development block grant model where the recipients compete on a regional level. Council awards block grants to non-governmental organizations for competitive grant funding, and that would be similar to the uh, NOAA Community Partnership Initiative model. And then also any others where we'd ask you to put them on, on an index card and give them to us separately so that we can put that in as a consideration as we, we uh, do the automated response system later on. Really exciting stuff. But, you know, the, the, you know, the consideration of this and how you'd like to see the money flow, I think, is going to be an important question, and it's something that we would like to be armed with to make a recommendation for. So rules, as you've heard already, there are no rules yet that uh, what we want to do is propose recommendations to the council to influence those decisions. We, if we come forward and we say, this is our preference, and no one else is saying what their preference is, no, we're going to have a lot more say in the process. And what we're seeking are proposals which can inspire and, and show people from all over the Gulf of Mexico yeah, that, yeah, those are great projects. That will really help 
the estuaries in the Gulf of Mexico. And wow, why can't we find great projects like that? Boy, those are really great. So that's what I hope to bring to the council and bring to the rest of the Gulf of Mexico is, is strong projects that are model projects, just the type of substantial, significant project improvement for the Gulf of Mexico. So that's the Southwest Florida Regional or Florida Regional Restora Ecosystem Restoration Plan idea. So I, th I think at this point, I'm going to open up to questions. And Judy, can you play Oprah? Are there any questions at this point? There may not be. OK. Um, Steve Swa, um, on the administrative options that you had up there, um, do, you, do you have a recommendation on an alternative? And also, I mean, how, how would one determine the pros and cons of each? Well, many of you already uh, compete for these funds, uh, you know, especially if you're working for a, a county or a city. And Steve, you have worked for a, a county, and you've probably had, had the benefit of some of these funds and the projects that you've implemented. So I'd use your own experiences with these different mechanisms and what you think might be appropriate for this. In terms of my own recommendation, frankly, I'd like to see a mechanism that works best for our partners. What we want to see is restoration in Southwest Florida, and we want to see it in the, the simplest, easiest way. Uh, we would be happy to have it you know, sent through the NEPs for this 11-county area and, and to, to provide that, that administrative support. And that would also uh, involve the NEPs in terms of project management and ensure that they're in installed in a way that we, we had foreseen within our comprehensive conservation management plans. But honestly, more than important than that, is for it to be an easy process for our, our partners. Any other questions? <laughs>